everyone. I recently put together this plastic canvas Victorian house tissue box cover. This was a vintage kit that I picked up on eBay and I'm going to show you exactly how I put this together. The inspiration for this actually came from my grandmother. She had very similar Victorian house tissue box covers when I was a kid growing up and I just got that urge to find something similar and recreate it. But I actually had a really hard time finding patterns out there that I could use that were like similar to what I had remembered her having. I found this vintage kit on eBay. It came the closest to what I could remember in my mind that she had. So this is the one I went with, but sadly I don't have a pattern I can point you to if you wanna make this as well. Since I purchased this as a kit, it did come with all of the yarn that you see here included. It seemed to be in pretty good shape and I had every intention to just like stick with the yarn that they sent and like kind of stay within that original color scheme. The kit also included all of the plastic canvas needed for the project. It did come with seven mesh plastic canvas and I'm pretty sure it was ultra stiff plastic canvas. I can just kind of get a good feel when I moved it around that it wasn't just like a standard plastic canvas, but was the ultra stiff kind, which is definitely preferred when building any type of structure with plastic canvas. There was also this cute little card. It's always fun like seeing these things from vintage kits. And then it did include a very detailed cutting guide. So it lets you know how to lay out the pieces on the plastic canvas to make the best use of all of the space. And of course it had the pattern. Like most good plastic canvas patterns, it did include a pretty simple set of instructions and then the pattern itself. And I was really blown away from this. Um, for some of you, it might seem very normal, but I was shocked to see that the pattern was like handwritten in. I thought that was really cool. I always like to use size 16 tapestry needles for my plastic canvas, um, a good pair of scissors for cutting the yarn. And then these like spring loaded, scissors. I think they're from Fisker. Um, these are great for cutting plastic canvas because they really help. Um, like it's just a lot easier on your joints. <laughs> so I highly, highly recommend those. At this point, I started stitching. Uh, you can see my kind of go-to starting method when I'm stitching with plastic canvas is to just catch the tail along the back. And that is how I anchor the threads. And sadly, at this point, I decided to rip out all of the yarn and toss it because there was like the strongest moldy mildew smell coming off of the yarn. I just, I couldn't handle it. And I'm sure maybe I could have like washed it or aired it out to get rid of the smell, but I was very impatient and wanted to start stitching. So I went to my wall of scrap yarn and basically picked out like a whole new color scheme. I was very um, interested in using this like purple yarn uh, for the main part of the house. I was not sure at all if I was going to have enough to actually complete the entire tissue box cover, but I was just like, screw it. And I went for it. So even though my initial intention was again to use all the called for yarn and stick with that original color scheme, because I had to substitute the yarn anyways, I decided to have a little bit of fun with it. Um, I actually grew up in a Victorian house. It was like baby blue and baby pink and something about this purple just like really reminded me about the house. I know it's a different color, so it's hard to explain, but I felt like it was a bit of an ode to the house that I grew up in. And I did add some little touches later on. I used pink for the curtains in the house, and then I used baby blue for some of the uh, trim work and the door to kind of, again, just remind me a little bit more about the house that I had grown up in. And again, uh, stitching with plastic canvas, I find the easiest starting method to just catch that tail along the back and anchor it in as you complete those first few stitches. It's really, really easy on plastic canvas because you can like see through and like really have a good eye, a good eye on exactly what you're doing. Working through the pattern, I really just do um, my half stitches working across in rows. And the majority of this pattern was a half stitch or a tenth stitch. To end my threads, I also just, you know, flip my work to the back and run the needle under a few of the existing stitches along the back. 
Um, but it does get a little bit tough with plastic canvas sometimes to run your needle under some of those existing stitches along the back, um, especially if you're keeping those nice clean lines along the back. So it's always a good idea to keep the last few stitches of a thread a little bit loose so that you can kind of work your needle underneath them when it's time to anchor your thread. And with a project like this, I mean, you could create a knot on the back. No one's really going to see it because it's going to be like a structure at the end of the day. But I always worry with tying a knot that it could come a little bit loose and that your stitches aren't just going to lay flat and correctly along the, the front. So that's why I avoid doing knots. But again, you can do whatever you find to be the easiest. And then I really just move through um, color by color, section by section. You can see here some of the colors I decided to go with for the trim and the details. There was that light pink for the curtains I was talking about. And this was really coming along nicely. Um, that being said, color substitutions are never my strong suit. So I had actually... Um, started this section I was using I think a very dark gray for some of the lines there is um I don't know if you would still call it back stitching but essentially like an outline stitch which provided a lot of nice detail but I wasn't really happy with that color for the door it felt really really dark to me so I did end up ripping the door out and then making it the light blue which is also that kind of accent color in the trim that I had so for me, this is why I like to always avoid color substitutions. It really just, I have to like do something and see it to really find out if I like it or not. Um, so I always prefer to follow a pattern and the colors that it calls for when at all possible because it's just typical that I'm going to get kind of along in the process and decide I don't like something and then, and then try to swap it out. But I did eventually get this to a place that I was really happy with. And as much as I don't enjoy backstitching on cross stitch, I really don't mind it as much on plastic canvas. And you can see it really did make this pop. Here were all of the panels completed. And here's my big ginormous disclaimer that I'm going to give. I am always a fan of actually cutting my pieces out of plastic canvas first and then stitching on them. But this pattern said over and over and over again to stitch first and then cut after. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna follow the pattern, give it a try. I don't like it any better. I actually don't prefer it at all. So I really do recommend that you trace your pattern out first, cut it, and then stitch over it. But either way, my tips for cutting are the same. I like to cut basically in between the bars if you try to go for a really clean cut right off the bat you are at risk of um, snipping through the plastic and kind of ruining the integrity of your panel so once i kind of cut in between the bars i then go back in and clean up the edges to make them nice and clean and get rid of all of those little extra nuts. for any of those hard to reach places where you can't like really get your scissors in there comfortably um, i found cuticle nippers to be the absolute best tool for that and that's actually a tip and trick that someone on tiktok taught me my last tip for cutting is when you have these um, corners, I like to go in and just kind of clean them up a little bit with a cuticle nipper or my scissors just to um, kind of blunt that edge. It really makes the piece cleaner when you're joining those kind of diagonal cuts together. And with everything stitched and then cut, it was time to start joining these pieces together, which is always super exciting. Wait, no, I lied. <laughs> First, I had a little bit of overcast stitching to get done. Uh, typically, I do overcast stitching kind of as I'm joining the pieces together. It just always makes a lot more sense to me to do it that way. Um, but this like inside of the chimney is what this piece is going to be. I really had to do that one first because it was going to be difficult to do the overcast stitching on that after it was assembled. But once that was out of the way, I could start putting all of my panels together. And the way I actually like to do this is I'll take the two pieces that I'm joining and actually um, place them against each other. So right side facing right side. 
uh, you can see I'm just going to kind of like fold them up. And the really important thing with joining plastic canvas pieces is to just make sure that all of your holes are lined up correctly. So you just want to start on one end and work your way either down or up. And it's also really important that you use like colors with like colors. So, you know, you can see here I'm using purple on the main part of the house. I use green down below at the grass. And to end those threads, I just run them along um, under existing stitches anywhere on the panels you can see here it can get a little tight getting that needle in and out so I always keep a pair of pliers on hand and that just really helps to pull that needle through in any areas that are getting really tight and as good as the instructions for this kit were um, it was a little vague <laughs> in places when it came to the assembly of the structure so I've noticed this sometimes with some plastic canvas patterns. Um, some are better than others when it comes to the kind of joining instructions. So you might need to use a little bit of best judgment when you're putting everything together. I just like, like to keep that reference photo handy and continue to look at it as I'm piecing everything together to make sure I'm not missing anything. And, you know, a lot of times it's pretty straightforward and easy, but I did just want to point that out. Another thing to point out is when you're joining these panels together, especially when you have them folded against each other the way that I showed in that earlier clip, um, you want it to be tight but not too tight. Uh, there's kind of like a nice middle ground there, but if you do it, you know, if you're pulling really, really tight on those stitches, it might be difficult to fold the panels into the correct position. So you want it to be snug, um, but you know, might need to leave a little bit of tension there, just kind of depending on on how tight or loose you typically make your stitches. I think I tend to have a really tight hand, so I kind of have to remind myself to like be a little bit loose when I'm joining those panels together. And after putting together the main body of the house, I went ahead and started to get that attached to the base. And again, the same principles apply. You just want to have all of those holes lined up with each other. And again, we're going to use like colors with like colors. So I'm using green to attach all of the grass to the panel and then white to attach those doorways. And then here, this is uh, the fence pieces that then get attached to the outside of the panel. Uh, this is where I had some more overcast stitching to get done. And then I attached the fence panels to each other in groups of three, and then took that one long piece of fencing and attached it to the base. And this is where, you know, I kind of think, you know, where best judgment comes into play. There's not going to be that level of detail in the pattern. So you kind of have to sometimes use your best judgment with the um, steps of assembly that you want to use. And then for the roof of the house, you can see I attached all of the roof panels to that center piece first and then started joining along the diagonal. When I'm going along the diagonal with plastic canvas, I do tend to go over twice um, just because that's that's one area where the plastic canvas will really show through where you're joining it. And then I didn't do anything to attach the roof to the house. Um, the instructions do say to hot glue it and I just decided I didn't think it needed it. It was a pretty snug fit. And, you know, this is more decorative than anything. Obviously, we'll use it, um, but I felt like it was fine without hot gluing the roof to the house, but that's always an option if you're doing a similar project at home. And there she is. This was the final product. I was so happy with it. This was just like a really fun vintage little kit and craft to do. It fits any, you know, standard tissue box. You just pop it on from the bottom and pull the tissues out from the top. And I love it. Thank you for watching and I hope you were able to learn a few tips and tricks for your next project.